Welcome to Auburn University for more of our live SEC ESPN coverage of collegiate gymnastics. Tonight, the eighth-ranked Auburn Tigers welcome the three-time defending NCAA champions and number one-ranked Florida Gators. I'm Bart Connor, along with Kathy Johnson-Clark and Laura Rutledge reporting on tonight's matchup. And for Florida, boy, it's been a crazy nine months. Last April, they won their third straight NCAA team championship in a thriller winning by five 100s over Utah. And shortly thereafter, their head coach, Rhonda Fain, who had been there 13 years, resigned to take a prominent position at USA Gymnastics to work with the Olympic team. And May 9th, Jenny Rowland, formerly of Auburn for the last five years, took the head coaching job at the number one program in the country. Kathy, who expected that? It shocked everyone, and not least of all, Jenny Rowland, who had an agonizing decision considering Auburn's great season last year. The only thing that could pull her away from Auburn was the chance, the opportunity of a lifetime. Even Jeff Graba said, you got to take it. <laughs> Something of a homecoming for Coach Rowland coming back here to see her friends. And of course, Coach Graba as well, who she says has been quite a mentor to bring her to the level of head coaching status. There is Coach Jeff Graba in his sixth season, and what a job he's done oh. here at Auburn. He has just been amazing here, and he's so comfortable and confident and says himself, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any team in the, in the nation. We don't have to wait for them to make a mistake to take advantage of. His philosophy is bring on the difficulty, and we'll see some exciting gymnastics. How about Florida? Three of the top four all-arounders in the country are from Florida. They are Sloan, Baker, and Boren, and we'll see them tonight. So the best of the best in women's collegiate gymnastics. The host team, the Auburn Tigers, will open up on the vault, and Florida will start on the uneven bars. Let's go to the vault. And Auburn is young. They're going to open up with a freshman, Taylor Krippner. And the plan is they really want to increase the amplitude and clean up the landing on these first two vaulters. Much bigger than her previous meets. I know that is going to make Coach Graber really happy. He said these first two gymnasts, he really wanted to see them fly high. Remind you the rules in dual meet competition. There will be six gymnasts for each team on each event. The best five scores count towards the team total, meaning they can drop the lowest score. After all the apparatus, the team title will be awarded. And the home team goes in what we call the Olympic order, vault bars, beam, and floor. And the away team does the opposite of that, which means Florida opens up on the uneven bars. This is sophomore Kennedy Baker from Flower Mound, Texas. Who is a great leadoff performer on this event. Really big gymnastics. You saw that on the amplitude on her release move. Strong gymnast. Hitting good handstand, setting up for a dismount, double front. She took that out a little too far, had to make a correction in the air, so she didn't quite get the stuck landing she wanted. But it's still a strong start. Watch the height, the amplitude here on the release move. And unfortunately, she released just a little early. This double front went out away from the bar. That makes it really hard to come in for a perfect landing. Back over to the vault. Now, Emma Angler, the freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina, will be up. The first three vaulters for Auburn are all freshmen. What a lot of pressure. <laughs> Her last meet, she came up a little bit short of rotation, landed short on the landing. Coach Grable wants them to settle down, but still go big. Think of the vault. Don't get ahead of yourself and try to stick the landing before you get there. Got a little bit of a conference here between the judges trying to come up with that score for the first vaulter. Score for Krippner in the leadoff role, 9-7-7-5. Boy, I tell you what, it must be because they're performing at home because these are better vaults by both the two freshmen leading off Take a look at some of the keys the judges are looking for on ball. You really want to get a good block off this 
or in this release move. Notice the height, the amplitude, but it's all about the handstand. Look how straight. They're not all created equally. And Bridget Sloan does an excellent job of pushing through the shoulders, locking out the elbows. No pike in the hips, no sag in the back. So this is what you want to look for when you watch the uneven bar routines. Alicia Boren, what a spectacular start she has had. Just a freshman out of Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. She is currently tied for first in the all-around in the country. And Bart, you could see the serious look on her face. They're trying to get her to lighten up just a little bit in competition. Very good so far, hitting the handstand skills. She's getting into a really nice rhythm. Calm, not getting ahead of herself. Double layout, oh, pipe down and she didn't need to. That forced the step back on the landing. We go back over to vault for Auburn after Angler's score comes up. Next will be a Miracle Phillips. You talk about a fascinating name. Here's a young lady whose mother, when she was pregnant, got in a serious car accident. Her mother's here, by the way, Marianne Phillips. And so when a miracle was born, it was because it was that. Simply a miracle, hence the name. So here she goes, the freshman walk-on from Enterprise, Alabama. She can do huge vaults, but like they say, you never know if she's going to stick it or land in the third row. Well, might need a miracle on the landing, but she could come up with it here. Jeff Graber wants you to go big. There it is. Oh, no. She was thinking about the landing. You could tell if you watched her warm up, she had the biggest block on the team. Height, distance, but she wanted to control the landing, and you just can't think ahead to that. All right, let's go down to the third member of our broadcast team, Laura Rutledge. Bart, as Kathy was just saying, a miracle has been thinking about that landing. She actually separated herself from the rest of the girls and has just been practicing the landing, taking a lot of deep breaths, but you can tell she was visualizing it. It was really in her head. Jeff Grava tried to tell her right before she went on vault to calm down and not focus on the landing, but it looks like that was in her mind. This is Bianca Dancos Giambattista, who has just beautiful, long, elegant lines on the uneven bars. She's a so senior from Montreal, Canada, 11-time member of the Canadian national team. Whoa! Looked like she was really slinging that dismount out far. We haven't seen a stick yet over on the uneven bars, but good work within the routine. Lexis Demers will be next up for Auburn on the vault after three freshmen. Here is the redshirt senior from Blaine, Minnesota, who was acknowledged last year as easily the most improved team on Auburn, in fact, especially for this vault. Uh, she is a very improved gymnast throughout her collegiate career. She's just gotten better and better, and as you mentioned, on this vault. I know she wants to stick it, but she's got a tender ankle, so that could be a little tricky. Took the step back, probably a little wise. I saw her in warm-ups, and she just drilled a landing, but I could tell it hurt the ankle a little. So she took this vault way back. She got good distance, didn't quite get the block up. Notice her head is below the level of the table, the, below the table, and then, of course, she took that step back. Scores but she protected the ankle. All the scores for Auburn on vault between 9.725 and 9.8. We'll be back at the bars for Florida. Bridget Caquato, the senior from Naperville, Illinois. Five-time All-American, and boy, what a contributor she and formerly her sister Mackenzie have been to the growth of this Florida program. And they called her Bridget. She was uh, sick with a stomach bug early in the season. She's just now getting back to form. And she's capable of a very big bar routine. Here's her release move. Just beautiful height, perfect distance from the bar. Look at that handstand. This is the best bar routine I've seen her do this season. Little bit conservative on the final handstand. See if she can stick the landing. Double layout. Whoa, nailed it. Little bit of a pike down. But she was zeroing in on that landing. Watch this amplitude. And the best part about that was the perfect distance away from the bar. Her arms were completely extended as she reached into the regrass. And right here, she could tell, I'm going to pike it down a little bit, but I can come up with a stick. 
So yeah. Lexus Demers had a 9-8 for Auburn on the vault. So they have two 9-8s. The other scores are in the 9-7 range. Here's MJ Rowe. And she is dynamic on this event. Oh, mm. made the same mistake. She was really trying to lay that out and go for the stick. And again, especially early in the season when you don't have the numbers in competition. In terms of experience, the most accomplished gymnast in this event is Bridget Sloan, 2008 U.S. Olympic silver medalist, world all-around champion in 2009, and then she came to University of Florida where she's had NCAA titles in the all-around beam and the bars. She's the first collegiate gymnast in history who is formerly a world all-around champion. So she has been a game changer on many levels for this program and in fact for women's collegiate gymnastics. Absolutely. Family. What a gymnastics journey, but most important, I think she has shown everybody the benefits of going to college, even after a World or Olympic Games. Look at the beautiful technique. I mean, she clearly has just superb, superior technique. Her teammate, Bridget Coquato, had a 9-9 before her, so the stage is set. It's set. She's been a teeny bit short on a handstand, but she is so perfect throughout the routine. Then, of course, you can count on Bridget to come up with a landing. Now she's known for sticking landings. Her international elite experience coming through there. 21-time All-American, and she owns a share of every Florida Gator record. She just, just has fabulous technique and an uncanny sense of where the ground is, just like a cat. Over to vault for Auburn, Caitlin Atkinson. MJ wrote, by the way, a 9-6-7-5. This is a one and a half. And with the change in the code of points, this vault is now worth a 10.0. Full has been devalued to a 995. Unfortunately, she took a big step, so it kind of kind of counterbalances the extra five hundredths of a point she had in bonus. And that's a big step. They will take a significant deduction for that. And now the score for MJ wrote before her was a 9675. So good scores, but not great scores for the host team. Alex McMurtry, boy, she has scored perfection before on the vault. Let's see what she can do on the bar. And this is a new skill right here. She learned it in two weeks, if you can believe it, to put it into this routine. They're requiring that single bar release. Oh, this is beautiful. Sets up for the dismount. Little flex of the feet on those giants. Oh, Half in, nice. half out. That's a full twisting double back and another perfect landing for Florida. On the bars. 9925 was the score for Bridget Sloan after Coquado's 99. Expect a big score from McMurtry. Boy, nice clean technique and execution. Absolutely. Look at the height on this dismount. She finishes it level with the high bar so she can spot that landing and come up with perfection. All right, that. Wraps up the first of four rotations. Auburn will move to the bars, and the NCAA champs, Florida, will move from the bars to the vault. Florida will have the lead. Don't go away. The best in women's collegiate gymnastics tonight here from Auburn University. We're glad you're with us. Welcome back to Friday Night Heights. We're at Auburn University for a terrific matchup. And as you can see for the scores of the first rotation by four tenths of a point, the three-time NCAA champs, Florida has the lead. Here are the scores for Auburn. Respectable, but not spectacular in the first rotation on the ball. Florida had some big scores as expected on the uneven bars. Three scores of 9-9 nine, nine or better from their final three athletes. What a start for the NCAA champs. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Bart Connor, along with my fellow Olympic medalist, Kathy Johnson-Clark. And we expected a great matchup tonight. Obviously, Florida has been one of the most dominant programs for the last three years. And Auburn has been exciting to watch their trajectory to become a Tier 1 program here in the SEC. But this year, of course, because of all the coaching changes, this competition takes on a little extra spice, doesn't oh, it? absolutely. When I first got the news about the coaching change, I thought the key to this working for Florida or not is Bridget Sloan and she said herself it, it really rattled her and she goes I am not a fan of change but she matured she said after digging in and getting a little stubborn she opened up to Jenny and realized you know what it's not all about me it's about the team Jenny Rowland's going through some change too let's work together and and it is now really working well unexpected that Jenny Rowland left the job here at Auburn after just five years but took the head coaching position at Florida the top program in the country she owes a lot to her mentor here in Jeff Graba, who's done a really nice job to bring Auburn to where they are now. It's great. They they tried to go for too much in that first event, trying vaulting here at home. They wanted to stick those landings, so they came up a little bit short, but I think they'll settle in as we go on. All right, when we come back, we'll go to the second rotation. Alex McMurtry for the Florida Gators will be on the vault, and she has tasted perfection on that event in the past. She scored a 10. Don't go away. Great gymnastics coming up. Back here in Auburn, I'm Laura Rutledge, and as Kathy mentioned before, the key to the coaching change at Florida would be Bridget Sloan, and Bridget said one of the reasons she was so hard-headed about Jenny Rowland coming in early on is she just assumed she would have the same coach her entire collegiate career, but once they got past the challenging aspect of it, they really developed a strong relationship, and I've been watching them tonight. There's this comfort level between them. They almost have unspoken communication as they've gone throughout, and I also talked with some other Florida gymnasts. They said Jenny Rowland was perfect for this job following Ron of fame because she has this motherly quality to her. They all love her. All right, the visiting Florida Gators, Bridget Paquato will lead them off. She did a spectacular job on the bars, 9-9, a season high for her. Let's see what she can do here in the leadoff role. Yurchenko full. Pretty big hop on the landing. She was a little bit off on the pre-flight. Didn't quite hit the table in the position, the ideal position to get a great block. Auburn, they're ranked fifth in the country on the uneven bars. Kelsey Kopech will be next. Alpha, Alpharetta, Georgia is her hometown. She's a junior. They're using her here to take some of the pressure. You saw on vault, the first three vaulters were all freshmen. Well, she's a junior. They need a little experience here. And she is long, tall. She really wants to show off those long lines here on this event. Hit those handstands. Oh, no, a little bit of fumbling around with her hands, but she managed the transition pretty well. Just a minor adjustment. Let's see if she can... Get a good dismount here. Look for the shape in the air to get a landing. There it is. That's it. That's what she said. <laughs> Boy, you know what that can do for a team. Right here on this skill, after her release move, shoot over the bar. Just didn't quite get a good grip on the low bar, but quick adjustment. She's right back into the routine. This was the best part. She was aiming for the perfect position in the air to see that landing. And a fist pump and high fives from Kurt Hedinger in his eighth season there. This is fast bender for Florida. Not quite getting the block off the table that I saw in the warm-ups. So that's the reason they're not getting the shape in the air that comes up with a good landing. They're still solid vaults, though. Erica Fassbender, the sophomore from Katy, Texas. Uh, great level of elite experience. We saw Taylor Krippner lead off on the vault for Auburn, had a 9-7-7-5, so let's see what the freshman from Cypress, Texas can do on bars. She's a former junior national qualifier. Coach Graber calls her a trickster. She trained at the same club as uh, Caitlin Atkinson, and both of them came into Auburn with really big skills. They're capable of the bigger tricks, and that's something that Jeff Graba 
wanted to do when he first started Auburn, to really make his mark, do the big gymnastics. Yes, it's risky. You're gonna make mistakes, but show that you're capable of that level of gymnastics and then fine tune, get the finesse into the routines. Now the consistency, then you can compete with the best. Kelsey Kopek got him off to a great start. Her 9-8-2-5 in the leadoff role is a season high for her. She opens with a nice combination. Her two release moves back to back. Here's the big release move though on a single bar right there, the reverse hack. So already she does more in her routine than some of the standard college routines. Oh, she wanted that landing, but just too off balance to pull it off. Very nice level of difficulty though in that routine. Now she had already done two of the smaller releases in the routine, throws in this reverse hack to add to the difficulty. And she was a little tiny bit off on that last handstand, makes it a little harder to set up your dismount. She was off balance and couldn't quite keep her feet planted. Bridget Sloan will be third up on vault. Their first two scores for Coquato, 9.75 and 9.8 for Erica Fassbender. That is absolutely beautiful technique. The previous two vaulters, we saw angles in their shoulders and couldn't get that block off the table. Well, not with Bridget Sloan. She has such pretty technique, really straight body right here so that you can push she finishes with her head above the level of the table. Look, head right in line, perfect alignment there. She can do a one and a half twist, but I know Bridget, until she knows she's gonna stick it cold, she'll stick with the full and add the difficulty later. Brilliant, when you match her power with her exquisite technique. Back to the bars now. Emma Engler, the freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Ooh, boy, she had to pull that handstand back. Her release moves different than we've seen so far. That was a Jaeger front. Nice to see some variety in the release moves. Good handstand to set up the dismount sequence out of two giants. Double layout. She landed a little bit low. Anytime they land with their chest down and they have to pike, the judges will take a slight deduction there. And then, of course, for the step. Here's a young lady who didn't compete for two years because of nagging injuries. Kennedy Baker will be next up, sophomore out of Flower Mound, Texas. And this can be a huge vault for Florida. She's going to do the one and a half twist. Keep in mind, that's valued out of a 10.0. Much harder to land. Beautiful vault, couldn't quite get the stick. So she'll get a deduction for the hop, but adding that extra one and a half twist, let's see, good position on the takeoff, on the repulsion. Slightly off to the side, but it's a one and a half, so she's got a little bit of a benefit going in. That five hundredths of a point will help. Emma Engler had a 9.725, and that brings up Kate Clues in the fourth position, the junior out of Michigan. She had a very bad stomach virus in the <gasps> fall. She missed some training time. Woo, you can't tell it on that release move. She got some big air there. It's nice to see Auburn being so clean, very consistent on this event. They've done well all season long here. That's your best routine so far. Really, really solid from start to finish. Watch the height way up above the bar. That is just gorgeous. She was a little bit close to the bar, so her arms were slightly bent on the regrass. But that's getting picky. Judges couldn't take a mark off there, though, on that landing. Very nice. Alicia Boren, the freshman. Kennedy Baker before her a 9.875. This is another one and a half twist. Boy, that's a big fault. Nice in the air. Just can't quite get the landings here. It'll be interesting to see what the coaches do because they're playing a little strategy 
to figure out whether it's worth going for the extra half twist to get a little more difficulty value, but you might lose something in the process. Absolutely. That's why they devalued the Yurchenko full to a 995, but it's only a half a tenth. Had they devalued it a full tenth, I think it'd be a no-brainer. But still, a one and a half should only be done by a gymnast who does it easily, because it's a long season to do that vault weekend after weekend. Sophomore Abby Malay now from Denton, Texas. She's a very clean gymnast, elite background. She has a mix of big gymnastics, like that release move right there, and good form and execution. Very nice height on that pack salto down to the low bar. So she's showing two strong release moves in this routine. She does a giant full pirouette into a very simple tough double back. The value is raised by virtue of the connection doing that full pirouette before she dismount. A year ago, in this very dual meet, Alex McMurtry thrilled everybody as a freshman and flared it out to score the first perfect 10 of her collegiate career. What a moment for that young lady. Well, here she is now. She's the anchor for the Florida Gators. And that is oh. just spectacular. Everything about that vault is so uniquely beautiful. She has just perfect technique, great block. Coach loves it. <laughs> she just gets the perfect position, head in line, blocks well, opens up. There's that beautiful flare, the stylized vault, which really sets her apart from some of the other gymnasts doing a full. Back to the bars now. Caitlin Atkinson will anchor them there. The scores have been very good for Auburn on this event. And it's hard for me not to get ahead of myself and look forward to her dismount, but it is so spectacular. Once she hits this release move right here, uh, just watch how high this dismount goes up above the level of the bar, way up there. And she can stick it every time, as Coach Gravis said. I'm, I mean, you're 19 feet in the air. If you can't stick it, you should go home. In fact, you said <laughs> even my mom could stick that landing coming down from that height. When you are this, look at this. It's completely finished, and her legs are perfectly together, toes pointed, feet together, and planted. Well done. And Coach Roland is with our Laura Rutledge. Thank you, Bart. Coach on vault, still trying to figure out the strategy with the Urchenko rule change. You have a couple of gymnasts do one and a half twists. What are your thoughts following vault? You know what, I think uh, the girls who are doing one and a half are performing them well. We just still need to get some kinks and work on those landings a little bit more, but I'm really confident in the ones that are actually doing one and a half are gonna outscore if they would do a full. On bars, three straight gymnasts with nine nines yes, and up. What are your thoughts on bars? You know what, I thought the girls did a great job first event out. Uh, I thought we were a little tight, a little conservative, the first girls up, but I think the last three finished very strong. I know you're in the zone here, but are you having any moments to look around and take in your homecoming at all? Worth it this time. I really don't. Honestly, Whenever I'm on no. the floor, whether whatever team I'm on, I'm always in the moment with my team. So I'm just really, really proud and out, looking but... forward to having fun on the next two rotations. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you, Laura. Coming up, we'll follow the story of Ivy and Zach through Swoon, brought to you by Bell. Being an, ass an assistant at Auburn for five years, uh, head coach Jeff Graba allowed me to have the opportunity to be a part of every aspect of the program. I hired Jenny knowing that she was going to become a head coach at some point. I feel that he prepared me very well and uh, brought my confidence level up to the point that uh, I was I was ready to move on and uh, take this challenge. To me it's just uh, I'd like to be really successful. I'd like her to be really successful, just not against us. Nice to see the special relationship between a young lady and her mentor and now both of them coaches of two of the finest programs in the country. Here are the team scores. After the second rotation, the NCAA champions, Florida, by just a little over a half a point, have the lead over the home Auburn Tigers. 
And when we come back, Auburn goes to the treacherous balance beam. But they have Caitlin Atkinson, who is usually money for the Tigers. Don't go away. Friday Night Heights continues here in Auburn, Alabama. A terrific crowd, and by the way, Auburn has built a great following here. They are now ranked fifth in the country in terms of home attendance, averaging almost 7,000 for a dual meet. And of course, everybody's excited to welcome the number one team in the country, the Florida Gators. And for Coach Jenny Rowland, formerly of Auburn, now at Florida, a special homecoming of sorts. Auburn will open on the beam. They're ranked eighth in the country, and first up is junior Cullen Lowell. And this is a gymnast you can really count on to stay on the beam and do big gymnastics. Yeah. These flight series. There you go, a layout to two feet. Most of the gymnasts you see that do the layout, they step out. into the beat jump. This is really the event where you'd see the biggest effect having Jenny Rowland go to Florida. When you get a new beam coach, Jenny is so spectacular as a beam coach. And we now have Mary McDaniels, who came from the University of Kentucky, seems to be developing a really good rapport with these athletes. You want a lot of trust on this event. Coach Graben knows how critical that leadoff performance is on the beam. He's got a good one there to Florida on the floor now. Sophomore Grace McLaughlin, she's from Allen, Texas, competed for the World Olympic Gymnastic Academy known as WOGA, which of course has created many fine world and Olympic athletes, including Carly Patterson, Nastia Lukin, and others. Some gymnasts rely very heavily on their big tumbling passes. Grace really relies on her flawless execution and her dance. Opens with a front layout to a front full. Not one of the big E tumbling passes. We'll explain that later, which you're going to see from many of the gymnasts on the top teams. Coach Rowland told us, you know, her tumbling is adequate. She said, we really like the fact that she has really nice execution that'll set the tone for the rest of the lineup. There's a lot of front tumbling in the routine. That's a Rudy, a one and a half twist. Tumble backwards this time on the first scale, back one and a half twists, right to a front pipe. Very pretty routine. Laura. Well, Bart, Taylor Krippner is competing this particular beam routine for the first time. They changed her lead combination this week. She's excited to compete the routine because of an improved start value, but she said there is some nervousness competing it for the first time. Something to watch. She says the most difficult part of this routine for her is landing sideways on the beam instead of straight forward, but Mary McDaniel keeping her relaxed before this, reminding her to take deep breaths and also to squeeze her abs. Square hips. Oh, just a little doubt right there. She just kept that foot on the beam. You really need to attack landings on beam. 
especially when nerves or adrenaline come into play. That's the new element they added to really secure that start value. So the routine would be scored from a 10. She used to do a jump out of that front aerial. Most of the gymnasts have a backup in their routine to get that connection bonus. In case they miss one, they have the other. Back one and a half. Very nice landing on that. Nice job by the freshman. After making that adjustment in her combination. Really, it's, it's a funny thing. You don't know how the freshmen are going to react competing at home. A lot of energy in the arena. You have to learn to control that adrenaline and excitement. Grace McLaughlin had a 9.75 in the leadoff for Florida. This is Erica Fassbender, sophomore, also from Texas. She's from Katy, Texas. This great international and elite experience herself. So many of these athletes on the Florida Gator team have represented their countries in an international competition. In fact, six of the athletes have been on major international teams for the U.S. and Canada in particular. Erica's made such nice improvement from the first meet to the second. Two and a half twists to punch front. gymnasts have learned that in college it's not just about your level of difficulty and execution and form. You have to really play to the audience and really perform. Because when it comes right down to it, this is also a show they put on for their home fans. Nicely done. Fassbender did not do particularly well in her first meet. Went out of bounds in her second meet, but good control there. Good to see her working her way into the lineup. What a nice crowd on hand here at Auburn University. And as we mentioned, women's collegiate gymnastics is on the rise. 6,188 fans at home meets. Fifth highest average in the NCAA. Emma Engler now, the freshman out of Rally, North Carolina. The first two scores on Auburn's team teams, Lollick and Krippner, 9-7-7-5s. Now watch how she lands this. I watched video of one of her early meets. She really attacks the land. Oh, oh no. no! I jinxed her. She was so aggressive and solid on the landing in her previous meet. Be interesting to see that from the end to see if she was just off on the previous skill. Sometimes that happens. Good time to bring up the rules. Six athletes, each team on each event. The top five scores count towards the team total. So if there is a fall, you can drop the low score, but it does put extra pressure on the left, rest of the line. She just showed off some beautiful leaps, nice flexibility in the air. Good to see her get her composure back. Gymnastics is all about staying, staying where your feet are. Don't look back at the mistake, move on, stay aggressive. There's the layout step out. Really rushed, actually. Rushed from the back handspring into the layout. And unfortunately, there was not even a way to save it. It was off in the air. That's when you need it the most, right then. When you've made a mistake, they have your back. Alicia Boren, the freshman out of Franklin Lakes. Coach Rowland said one of her favorite moments so far this season is seeing this young lady smile. She was so nervous in the first meet. And she's very... the second meet, she finally really performed it. 
very serious in competition, and they couldn't convince her, just have some fun out there, too. Four-time Junior Olympic National Champion. She opens with a full in, and she has got some power. Very nicely done. Judges are really looking for those turning leaps to get all the way around in order to get kitchen bonus. You know, even though she grew up in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, both parents are graduates from University of Florida, so she was destined to be a Gator. Well, fumble just a little bit on that landing, just some stutter steps. Good routine, though. So much power in the tumbling. Showed a good level of difficulty. And looked like she had a little bit of fun, too. Score on the beam for Emma Engler was a 9-2-2-5. So that adds a little extra drama to the final three performers for Auburn on the beam. Next up will be Lexis Demers, the senior out of Minnesota. And they have three strong beamers going in the last half of the lineup. But you're right, it does add the pressure, but these gymnasts can handle it. This is what you train for. Nope, oh. And that was the type of skill where you just doubted it for a second to really follow through in gymnastics. It's like anything in any sport. A pitcher cannot aim their throw. You really have to follow through. What is the psychology of that? When one athlete falls, how do you respond so that you can get through the routine without feeling that additional pressure? It, you'll hear people say, oh good, she hit the dismount. She had trouble with that in the last competition and ended up not being able to twist it and didn't get credit, so a very, very low score. So I'm happy to see her come back from there. I only saw the one glitch in the routine. That was just a second of doubt. And sometimes that's something that you can learn to take back in the gym and change a little something in your training. We go from number one in the country in the all-around, tied Alicia Boren with this young lady, Bridget Sloan. You talk about a cool character. Boy, she loves to sell this routine. And she can turn it on like there's a switch there. She's changed her routine this year, hasn't she? This is a new, new music, new choreography. She loves it, and a new old pass. She used to do this three years ago. <laughs> she asked Jenny if she could do it. And she says, well, how long will it take you? Just give me a day or so. Remember, she hurt her ankle at the beginning of last season, missed most of the last season because of it. And it's because she was being aggressive, really wanting to upgrade the difficulty in this routine. Now she's gonna do the pipe double back in the middle. Oh, look at her face. She is excited about that. She has accomplished a rare feat in the sport of gymnastics known as the gym slam. She has scored a perfect 10 on all four events in the women's all around, the eighth gymnast in NCAA history to do that. She completed it last year. It's fun, I just caught a glimpse of the judge who has a big smile on her face as she's watching this routine. She is thoroughly entertaining. Now watch, she'll go for a stick right there. So predictable. <laughs> Great job. She does this with just two steps into it, manages to keep all this in one pass and stay in bounds, because that's a lot. One and a half twist through to a two and a half twist. Watch this, one, two, and a half, and she just finds the floor like no one else. 
Watch the beautiful split in the air. Perfect flexibility over 180. You really want to go beyond that split. Eddie Malay, now the sophomore from Denton, Texas, will be up. The score for Alexis Demers is a 9.75. So Auburn oh. has not even broken into 9.8 range yet on B. They're just showing a little bit of their nerves. And as I said, mentioned in the previous gymnast, something you can take back in the gym and figure out a way to practice this pressure and be aggressive. You know, whether it's hitting five in a row of every skull or ten with no wobbles, no bobbles. We have so many different ways to try to recreate the feeling in the gym so that you train for this. Two freshmen and one sophomore out of six performers in their beam lineup. You'll often see the coach stand on the end of the beam. Some, some programs do it, some don't. And McDaniel's standing right on the end of the jam. Really has a calming effect, just like in the gym. Nicely done. You'll hear them say over and over, just be normal. You don't want to try to go above and beyond what you do in practice. Even though it's tempting to do so, when you get in the arena and you just want to be spectacular and stick everything, you've got to stay in the moment. Kennedy Baker will be up next for Florida. Alicia Bourne had a 9-9. Bridget Sloan a 9-9-2-5. For both of them, season highs. Watch this opening pass. It is absolutely stunning. It is so high. It's one of the big E passes. Arabian double front, but look at her body position and how high she is off the floor. Gorgeous. I mean, that is almost laid out. This is great new choreography for her. She loves it. And when you love your routine, you perform it to its fullest. You can see her thinking a little bit about the tumbling. She has very nice flexibility as well. Shows that off on the leaps. You can just tell she loves this routine. And she loves selling it, doesn't she? You tell me how easy the tumbling looks, too. Years of training go into this. What a fun combination pass to close out the routine. Very exciting and well done. This pass just makes me salivate. It's so incredible. Look at the open pike position and the uncanny air scent she has to open out of it. I mean, this is amplitude to the max. You can really see her know where she is as she opens up out of that skill. That's amazing. Caitlin Atkinson, the final performer now for Auburn on the beam. No score has hit 9-8. Eddie Malay had a 9-7-2-5. So slight bobbles and nervousness there. Much more confident going into that skill and finishing it. You've got to finish it. She looks just a little tentative. They're hoping to drop the score of Emma Engler, who's only a 9-2-2-5. You can see her just checking ever so slightly after each element. Now, she's going to do a different dismount. She's capable of a pike double back, but she's got a foot that acts up and actually kept her out of Super 6 finals on this event. So they've switched it to aerial cartwheel. She did a full here. She can do a one and a half, and we'll add that later in the season. So the aerial cartwheel right into the dismount, the tucked full twist. Laura. 
Bart, you can really tell how Mary McDaniel is helping these Auburn gymnasts be more comfortable on beam, and she really alters what she says to them. Each different gymnast, she'll walk through the routine before they do it, tell them to take deep breaths. Some of them, she makes them laugh. So definitely the adjustment there between her and Jenny Rowland seems to be going well. Kennedy Baker had a 9.95, so three straight scores, 9.9 nine plus, and it brings up the anchor, Bridget Coquato, the senior. And a new routine for Bridgie, and she finally gets to perform it. Front double twist. I think this would fall under the fun category type floor routine. Got that split jump out of the Tumlin Pass. Sometimes she she kind of flies backwards on it, but really hit that position nicely in the air. I'm sure when she performs this at home, they got the whole O-Dome clapping here. There's the gator <laughs> chomp. Every routine has that choreographed into it. It's been a tradition for two decades. She needs to finish Florida. strong here. Pike double back. Oh, just a little buckle on the landing. They'll, they'll take a little deduction there. Landed a little bit low with the chest down and her legs just gave way. Now keep in mind, she's been sick. So she's just now really getting back to form. Okay, Laura's with Coach Graben now. Well, thank you, Barton. Coach, how did you think your last three gymnasts responded on beam after Emma's 9225? Yeah, I, I thought the girls did a good job. You know, we've been tight all night, and I think it's a sellout crowd, and I think our girls are feeling the pressure a little bit. And I feel like we've gotten going, and then we've, we've like, we're fits and starts, and it was nice that the last three actually did it and calmed down a little bit. How do you alleviate some of that pressure going into floor? Well, we haven't hit floor all year, so I told them, hey, that, that's the one event that we weren't good on, that let's go do that and, and come out of here with something positive and, and, and have a little bit of fun with it. You know, I want them to give this group, a, this crowd a show, so hopefully they'll do that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, when we come back, Auburn will go to the floor and Florida takes to the beam. The scores are up after the third of four rotations with a lead of just a little over a point. The three-time national champion, Florida Gators, in charge as they head to the fourth rotation. Bart Connor along with Kathy Johnson Clark. Of course, Florida has to go to the beam. Well, let's talk about Auburn right now because obviously the expectations are quite high. Now they're a tier one Super 16. They seem to show a little bit of nerves tonight. And you could see it all over their faces and in their performance. And you know, this is something you just can't prepare them for. A sellout crowd at home. Half their performances are from freshmen. You just got to go out there, feel it, see what it's going to, you know, how you're going to respond. And then you learn from it. He gave them the best advice. Hopefully he said to them, go out, put on a show, have some fun. All right, so they will go to the floor for their fourth and final rotation, and will get a chance to see their team, including Lexus Demers for Auburn on the floor. Of course, Florida will have to go to the all these dangerous balance beam. Then, though, you've got to regather out of that. It looked like you let it get into the rest of the routine a little bit. That's what I'm talking about. See, now you challenge them. Now what are they going to do, right? Hey, you're not having fun, right? And we're tight. Relax. Have fun with it. I want to go to floor and actually see a good floor set then, okay? We haven't, that's the one event we haven't done well all year. Let's go do that. It's a sellout tonight. 
You hear Coach Graves say it's a sellout. Well, it's the second ever sellout for Auburn Gymnastics. 7,424 in the building. They are a team to be reckoned with, and of course, they're welcoming the most dominant team in the country, Florida, who has to go to the beach. Florida, by the way, coming off a season high in the floor, 49-375. So their leadoff role goes to Kennedy Baker, the sophomore. They are the number one team in the country on beam coming into this meet. This is an event where Coach Jenny Rolla could really have a big impact on this team. She just has such a perfect way of getting them ready to perform. Under pressure, handle the nerves, Handle that adrenaline and use it. Very solid routine to begin. With a little bit over one point lead going into the final rotation. Auburn will be on the floor, but of course, Florida has to hit at least five solid beam routines to hold on to the lead over the Tigers. Abby Malay will get the call now. This is a lineup change. Prior to coming in here tonight, we thought we might see Lucia Scaglioni, the freshman from Tampa on floor, but Abby Malay now, the sophomore from Denton, Texas, will get the call to lead them up. Normally she contributes on bars and beam. They're trying to work her into complete all around as well. She's a very poised, polished, flexible performer. I love the way she shows off every skill. opening, she does a front layout into a one and a half twist. We see a lot of gymnasts do that layout into a full twist. Oh, Ooh. that's too bad. That's just one of those weird things that happens every now and then. She just stumbled going into her lead. She recovered well, but there's just no way to cover the mistake. Last year, she was a member of the All-SEC team. She comes from Denton, Texas, where she was coached by two Romanians, Aurel and Rodica Lazar. Notice how extended every, every pose is, a lot of energy. She creates a nice presence on the floor. A little bit short on the landing, not a big deduction though. Just really unfortunate she had that unusual mistake, stumbling going into the leap. Let's go down to Laura. Bart, we know how effective Jenny Rowland is as a beam coach, but apparently there's some superstition involved. Claire Boyce always has to stand to Jenny's left and film the beam routines, or Jenny can't get through it. And Claire was actually standing over with the other girls, and Jenny motioned for her to come over and said, I need you over here. Come on. So I'm wondering, did you guys have any weird superstitions when you were gymnasts? <laughs> Do we have to share that now? <laughs> we would admit to it. <laughs> Claire Boris, a member of their team, and she's out this season with injury, so we wish her well in her comeback. Peyton Ernst is up now. Kennedy Baker had a 9.85 to lead them off. A really nice balance beam performer. Great leg and back flexibility. You saw it right off the top of this routine. She has a lot of experience competing at the elite level. She's coming off a of shoulder surgery as well, isn't she? Yes, so this is a hands-free routine. Oh! Oh, I'm seeing a little bit of nerves from her. No matter how much experience you've had at the elite level or even competing internationally, you have to adjust to the differences in collegiate competition. The crowds are huge. They're very lively and loud. Nice job handling nerves because I definitely saw them now. Interesting, but Florida doesn't have a lot of depth, even though they're renowned as one of the best teams in the country. They just don't have a lot of athletes on their team. And in fact, half of their team scores come from just three athletes, their dynamic trio.
MJ Rook will be next up. The junior out of Stillwater, Minnesota. She's making a comeback of sorts as well. Last fall, she got rammed by a bike on campus and got injured. Luckily, she's okay and back in the lineup. So uh, that was an unexpected uh, challenge. She's a very dynamic tumbler. Sometimes has some trouble with the landing. She's got a lot of power. She has to control it on the landing. So far, pretty good. Very clean on her leaps and jumps. Coach Gravis says she's the most fierce competitor you will ever see. Now they changed this pass. She just, she's only been working on it about a week. She had to change that pass to get uh, the start value up to a 10.0. Needed to add a twist in there, and she did it very well. If she can get this landing. She really bounced on the landing at the last competition. Much better, much better. There you go. Important routine for Auburn. Abby Malay in the leadoff role got only a 9.65, so this will certainly be higher. Now she used to just use straight front layouts here. She added the half twist and then the jump after that, Branny. And much better on this pike double back. Really controlled the landing much more. A step back into the lunge. We saw the nerves for Auburn on the beam. Peyton Ernst got only a 9.625 with her slight missteps. So Erica Fassbender, the sophomore out of Katy, Texas, will be third up. Coach Rowland told us in a way because Spassbender, even though she's a sophomore, hadn't really made the lineup much last year. So in a way, she has half of her lineup on beam are freshmen, first-time competitors. Layout lacked some rotation. Kind of had to pipe down too severely with her chest down. And always a risk there of losing your balance. Yeah, if you're going to make a mistake on beam, it's always better to overdo Absolutely. something than underdo it, isn't Usually it? the mistakes don't come then. But it's easier said than done. Beam's a lot easier sitting here. <laughs> a lot of them are doing this aerial cartwheel into the dismount. They get to show that difficulty, but then go right into the dismount. So you don't have to stick the landing on the beam, but you get the credit for the skill. You gotta have muscles in your toenails to do balance beam, let me tell you. And you use it all sometimes. A little bit off on that, but you fought it. Saved it. MJ Road had a 9.85, her season high, and that brings up Lexus Demers. Now this is someone you can watch and take notes how to perform. She can electrify a crowd just with a look. She opens with a full end. This is where she hurt her ankle at the beginning of the season. Pull it around very nicely done. The last thing she wants is to land short on a tender ankle. Coach Gravis says she's something of a showboat and a gamer. So here's her chance to shine in front of her second sellout crowd in the history of Auburn gymnastics.
Very well done. I tell you, do not let the sparkles and makeup and ponytails fool you. <laughs> These are tough athletes. Her ankle is sore, it's taped heavily, but she handled it beautifully, made sure she landed. Slightly over-rotating instead of under. Want to protect the ankle, but she wanted to stick it as well, and stick it she did. Look at this, very nicely done. Let's go down to Laura. Bart, as Kathy said, that tender ankle for Lexus Demers, she told me that it does bother her on landings, but she relies on adrenaline to get through. Also, she wanted this to be a bounce back meet for her after struggling on Sunday. She feels like she's done that so far. And she felt like as a fifth year senior, she knows she's not the most consistent gymnast, but it's about responding to the times where she hasn't been consistent. Alicia Boren showing some nerves on beam as well. The freshman, it's interesting. We talked about the lack of depth at Florida. I think we're seeing a little bit of that on beam. Uh, less experienced competitors, including some freshmen, of course, in the lineup. Of course, but this is how you get the experience. You put them out there. As I said, you cannot recreate this in the gym, no matter how much you try. And all this is going to serve them well as the season progresses. It when you don't have the numbers, you've got to keep the bodies healthy. Tuck double back, really nice. Difficulty. She's such a powerful gymnast, she does that easily. Yeah, she definitely had some nerves. But when you can perform this level of difficulty at the end of the routine, you're doing pretty well. We go back to floor. Alexis Demers, a 9-9-2-5, a career high, and that brings up Kate Clues. So Auburn doing very well in this fourth and final rotation. Kate is a big tumbler. Shows it off right, right at the beginning with a full in, just like Lexus Demers opened her routine. works to get those wolf jump with fulls all the way around. Although she has so much difficulty in her tumbling, it's really where she gets full value of the routine. Nice height and tucked up her back. Landed with her chest a little down, but was way up in the air. Good job performing. She did exactly what Jeff Graber said. Put on a show. Give them a show. Auburn known for powerful athletics, and we're seeing it here on the floor. She showed off the tumbling. Rushed that full in just a little bit, but she's got so much power that she pulled it out just beautifully. Alex McMurtry will be next up for Florida on the beam. After the leadoff, 9.85 from Kennedy Baker. They've had a 9.625, a 9.75, and a 9.775. So not spectacular scores for Florida here. They're showing some nerves as well. well. They're expecting a lot from their final two performers. That's a change in her routine. She does a front toss now instead of a running front tuck. Easier on her back. She's had back problems throughout her career, so they just really have to manage it and work around it. Everybody's favorite skill here. Catches some people by surprise. They don't expect somebody to circle around and under the beam. Much more relaxed than some of the previous competitors. You can see her really controlling the energy, the adrenaline, and the dismount, double twist. She performed a two and a half all last year, going for an easier dismount to, to land. Anytime you can see the landing before, it's easier to stick. Reminder that Florida 
at a 1.25 lead coming into this fourth and final rotation. As we look to the floor for Auburn, you see their scores. Lexus Demers, a career high. Kate Klutz followed it up with a 9.85. Two performers to go for the home team. This is a very high energy routine. I remember watching it, thinking don't rush and miss positions. It's really easy to do when it's a fast routine. Colin Lawick, the junior out of Full Shear, Texas. Oh, oh no, missed the landing on that. Five tenths of a point for the fall. It's interesting, we watched her practice that opening tumbling run into a leap to avoid the potential for having a problem on the landing. She was just short of rotation. I know Lisa Benedict, their volunteer coach, has been working so hard the last couple of years trying to teach them how to perform on floor exercise and really reach the audience, not just the ones right along the edge, but all the way up at the top row really project. A lot of concentration coming in, going into this tumbling pass. Tuck double back. They all land just a little bit, a little bit short on that final tuck double back. You really want to land with your head up, chest up to get no deductions on. What do you think I, happened here, Kathy? Just not quite enough juice. The, the block actually looked a little mushy to me, the takeoff. Here are the beam scores for Florida. Look at that, Alex McMurtry delivered a 9-9. They're gonna drop the lowest score of a 9-6-2-5, expecting that Bridget Sloan will score higher, but McMurtry's 9-9 clinches the meet for Florida here. So Sloan is the icing on the cake. She needs a 9-8 to win the all-around tonight. You watch, she expects so much out of herself. She is not gonna be happy about that little bobble on the front aerial. Not only is she one of the most competitive athletes we've seen, she really takes care of herself inside, outside the gym. She takes everything very seriously even though she also takes having fun seriously as well. <laughs> you say sometimes she performs better when she's a little angry. After that slight bobble, she seems laser focused now, doesn't she? Yes. And this is a skill I know she's gonna really zero in on. Cat late into the aerial cartwheel, boom. There you go, much more aggressive. That brought a smile to her face. But even when she's slightly off, she's so good at finessing those landings, isn't she? Double twist. Look at that landing. Well done. I'd love to hear her inner commentary throughout her routine. <laughs> I'm sure it's quite colorful. Wow, look at the strength of those feet. Wow. Jeez. And she has a beautiful aerial cart. Well, that was the tricky trick for her that gave her trouble last year. And she worked extra hard. She does lots of numbers in the gym to perfect these. And she expects it from herself all the time. Caitlin Atkinson, the final performer for Auburn. Colin Lawick, a 9-1-7-5 after that mistake, unfortunately. Bridget Sloan, by the way, over on beam, had a 9-8-7-5. So, Auburn can't beat Florida, but it still gives Caitlin Atkinson, their outstanding all-arounder, a chance to shine. Beautiful pull in. Caitlin really shows so much strength, even in her dance. In many ways, she embodies everything about what Jeff Grave is trying to do here at Auburn. He said, we want to get noticed by doing big difficulty. And she was really the first high-level difficulty gymnast who bought into that whole idea. So she never holds back. Goes for the most difficult routines that she's physically capable of doing. 
Watch this jump right out of the tumbling pass. Another wolf jump. It's like she finally reminded herself, oh yeah, have fun. One more pass. Beautiful, pipe double back, excellent form in the air. That's the thing, she shows a lot of power, but also beautiful form in the air, and they are happy about that. The audience loves it. As I said, this is an athlete who really shows her strength in the tumbling and in the dance, tagging this tumbling pass with a wolf jump. Watch her toes, she's so explosive, and then points her toes throughout the entire double back. Beautiful. All right, that wraps up the performances of the teams tonight. When we come back, we'll give you the final score here from Auburn, Alabama. Another thrilling night of gymnastics here in the SEC. Once again, the final score, Florida 197.075, and number eight, Auburn 195.9. And Laura is with Bridget Sloan and coach Jenny Roll. Well, thank you, Bart. And we'll start with you, Jenny. Of course, going into beam, you knew that you needed solid performances. You're getting some experience for some gymnasts, but then of course you have Alex McMurtry and Bridget Sloan to finish it out. Your thoughts on beam? You know what, I think the girls did a great job on beam today. We had a little, a few more mistakes than we had the last couple of meets, but you know what, it's to be expected. And you know what, what I was really proud of them is their recovery and they came back and finished really strong. Now have you had time to reflect on coming back to Auburn in your homecoming and getting a win? Not yet, but I know I will. As soon as I get to see my old Auburn girls, it will uh, be very memorable to see them. But you know what? It was a great night with my Gator girls, and um, I'm just very proud of them. One of your Gator girls over here, Bridget Sloan, you said that she was going to make you look back in, bad in this interview. Um, what do you have to say about that? I would never make Jenny look bad, ever. No matter what is going on, I will never make Jenny look bad. Bridget, you had a slight bobble and beam, and then you seem to just have this laser focus following that. Give us a little bit of what your inner commentary was as you were doing that beam routine. To be honest, as I took off for the front arrow, I was kind of like, oh shoot, this is a little crooked. And I was like, well, are we going to try it? And then I laid and I was like, nope, don't even try. So I just stood up and I was like, all right, improvise, move into the series. And I remember at the very beginning, I'm talking like August, Jenny was like, if you don't connect your front aerial beach jump, you need to do a, what is it, a cat leap, sorry, a cat leap into your side aerial. And I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't done this since August, but here we go. And I was like, well, you know what, I'm just going to try it and see what happens. And I think that's what gymnastics is all about. I love that I can just go out there and even if I have a mistake on something, I know what to do. And that's, I mean, it took a long time to do that. Um, it's not a natural talent that I have. It's come through the years, but it's something that I really pride myself on because gymnastics is a sport that even when you make mistakes, if you can cover them up and make them a little less noticeable, nobody's even gonna really realize it so it was just kind of one of those amazing moments for me where I was like well I went for it and I remember looking at my team and I was I kind of gave them the look of like all right here we go guys I'm gonna try it and I mean they trust me and I trusted myself I was like you know what I can do this and after I landed I kind of started laughing because I was like hey guys I did it but again I mean it was a great road meet for us um, it was definitely a little different than what we were expecting simply because I love coming to Auburn it's one of my favorite meets in the freshman you could tell that they're still a little tense um, so we'll have to kind of warm them up a little bit but it was still really good i don't think you made jenny look bad but that was an amazing answer <laughs> <laughs> thank you but jenny still looks great <laughs> everybody looks great we'll go back to you bart oh thank you Laura. you know so many gymnasts say i just tried my best for my team what a thrilling interview you gotta love bridget sloan the winner of the gym slam 10 times four times she has scored perfect 10 on all the events what a great night the second sellout in Auburn history for gymnastics. Coming up next, SEC Story, Bo Barkley and the Big Hurt. So for Laura Rutledge and Kathy Johnson-Clark and our entire crew, I'm Bart Connor. So long from Auburn, Alabama. We'll see you next week.